Hey guys, welcome back to Set Schedule's Meet the Agent podcast. I'm Yvonne and I am a part of the media and content team here at Set Schedule. In this series, I will be chatting with real estate professionals across the country to get some insight into the new developments and challenges of the industry, as well as get some strategies and tips straight from the agents who do it best. As always, we would love to hear any feedback or suggestions you may have, so please send an email with your comments to media at setschedule.com. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Joining us today is Greg Geller, who is an awesome real estate agent based out of Indianapolis. Greg is actually a part of the FC Tucker Company, which is the number one brokerage in Indiana. So we're really excited to have him here to speak about his experience in the industry. How are you doing today, Greg? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to speak with you because in my opinion, I do think you are the best kind of agent. I know that you like to take on the mentor role with your clients and you like to keep them educated and informed when you are or when they are going through the home buying process. So I just wanted to get started and ask you about how you came to make that your focus. I was a teacher for 12 years. I think that is ingrained into me. There is so much unknown for a lot of clients, whether they're buyers and or sellers. And I had a client literally just the other day say, what does pending mean? Clients or customers, whatever you call them, don't necessarily know everything that we take um, for granted. Yeah, and I think that's just really helpful in general. I know the home buying process is a a long one and it can get really confusing. You're making really big decisions and it's a big purchase at the end of the day. Um, So I really do appreciate that you take the time and make sure that your clients feel comfortable and feel informed with their buying power and their buying decisions. You can separate yourself from other agents as well Mm -hmm. because it's not just about the commission. You know, it is Mm -hmm. about the process. I'm a big believer in developing uh, relationships because once Mm -hmm. you develop a relationship with someone, you will have them for life. And not only will you have them for life, you will have ideally, of course, all of their friends and families and neighbors and whoever, coworkers that they're going to refer you to. When you are talking to someone, whether it is a cold call, a person you know, a referral, a neighbor, an acquaintance, whatever level of uh, connection you have with that person, that you don't just think about them in that moment in that transaction. Because in the long run, though, making a relationship and getting the referrals uh, from them is how Mm -hmm. your business is going to really boom and grow. And so in my personal opinion, one of the ways you can do that is educating people along the way. I think that's such a great approach. From what I know of the home buying process, it's very personal and there's a lot of personal information that you have to get from your clients. And, you know, no matter where they are in their journey, I'm sure it could get a little bit uncomfortable, you know, having someone call you up and be like, hey, what's your credit score? You know, what are you approved for in terms of budget? So how do you go about getting them comfortable and getting them to trust you um, and feeling comfortable telling you all that private information There are two things that I take extremely uh, responsibility towards you, and those are confidentiality and fiduciary responsibility. And I I say towards you, for you, it depends on on my mood. For the client, though, confidentiality, I basically tell them anything you, you say to me stays inside my brain. My wife will not hear it. Nobody else will hear it. And number two, the fiduciary one, I basically say, you know, that means I have financial responsibility towards you and for you and your family that I am not going to put you into a situation that's going to adversely affect you. And then at that point is when I always jump into, and the reason I want to do both of those things is number one, so that you will trust me. And number two, if I was to break that confidentiality or that fiduciary response, number one, I could lose my license. Number two, more importantly, I build my business on on referrals. If I don't do right by you, you're not going to tell anyone. So I take that very seriously. And so that's how I kind of break the ice or make a connection, you know, with them. If I talk to them again, I'll remind them, you know, just reminding you that, you know, the reason I'm going to ask you the, these questions is number one, so I can serve you better and help you better. And that, and that's another way to kind of go at asking those, those type of deep or uh, potentially intrusive, which obviously our goal, we're not trying to be intrusive. We're trying mm-hmm. to serve them. And the only way that you can serve 
someone is by gathering that information, their credit score, have you been approved? If not, okay, how much money do, do, do you make? How much debt do you have? Just so you can get a sense and give them an idea of the level of home, meaning uh, what they would approve for. And then we can start discussing what's out on the market, where are they thinking about looking? You know, there's obviously a ton. And that's just the buyer side of things. I think that's a really great approach. I think because real estate is such a business of relationship that it's really important that when you are speaking with clients that you build that trust from the get-go. So I really like that you do remind them each time that everything is confidential, that you do have their best interests at heart. Are there any strategies or any techniques that you find helpful when you're trying to let your clients know that you're going to take care of them and that you're trying to show them that you do stand out from the competition? Uh, what do you find most helpful? I think uh, it, it really depends on the other person, quite, quite honestly. Uh, sometimes it's you hit it off right off the bat. Uh, sometimes it takes time. Once they see you being, oh, this person is going to be here. This person is taking their business seriously. They will come around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important that that you are touching them as much as possible. And uh, they, they may just text back, hey, got your voicemail, you know, still waiting on whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, you know, I had an incident in my family. I'm not ready yet. Again, you want to stay top of mind with them, even if it's someone you haven't met, so that when they do get to that point, hopefully you are the one they pick. Obviously, a family member could come out of the blue, <laughs> you know, become <laughs> agents, and then, you know, you don't get them. And that's, and that's you know, that is what it is. That's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I do like that you pointed out that consistent communication really is key in terms of establishing that relationship just to keep yourself top of mind. Um, I just want to kind of circle back or dial back a little bit and talk about what you find helpful when you're prospecting, because consistent communication helps when you have that initial contact and you know that they're open to, you know, being communicated with or being checked in on from time to time. What do you find helpful when it's, you know, a blank slate, like a point blank cold call first time speaking with them? What do you find most helpful? I literally, I, I start with the same thing and it took me a while to, to figure this out. And I have found that has worked enough that, you know, I've got lots of people that I'm getting approved for loans. We're going to look at houses. I've got some that we, I've listed houses for. So I think the key is your energy. You know, you have to, you have to have a mindset that anyone, even the top you know, salesperson out there, you pick, you pick someone out there. Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, whoever you, you want to pick, even they're not going to be able to, to, to change someone's mind. So, mm -hmm. And a lot of times they may not be looking for themselves. They're looking mm -hmm. for somebody else, a sister, a mom, a brother, uh, a friend who's moving into the, the area. So whatever your dialogue is, then you've got you've to be able to think on your feet quickly because you don't know what's going to come at you. What do you find most helpful in the next step in building that relationship and nurturing that relationship? Um, the basic thing is make sure you're listening to them. And that's why I say, you know, just start with your dialogue and then whatever comes at you, you've got to be ready to go this way or that way or whichever way the, the conversation takes you because you're going to learn a lot when you listen. I, again, I think listening, taking notes, using those notes to connect on your next call and then obviously serving them. So if they say, I'm looking for a house in such and such a neighborhood, well, then, you know, have you been approved? How much are you thinking of spending? You know, I'm always willing to set up what I call a home shopping portal through our MLS system because it's a great okay. way for them to start seeing what's out on the market. They can see that you're listening to them. You've set up the portal according to what they say, whether it's three bedrooms, two baths, you know, they want a basement, they don't want a basement, they want a garage, whatever the criteria or filters are. Again, this is for buyers, of course. I like that you kind of mentioned that you do like to reference the things that you spoke about previously in your current calls. And I think it help, really helps make it seem less transactional as well. I feel like with so many agents out there, it 
can kind of feel a little bit overwhelming when you're in contact with so many. So I do like that you take a more personal approach. And I know you mentioned earlier that you were a teacher before you joined the real estate industry. Uh, so yep. I was hoping you give us a little bit of background on that and what kind of or how you crossed over into the industry and what skills you found helped you the most. Well, so uh, between teaching and um, pre real estate, I owned my own business for 15 years. Oh. Uh, built it from you know zero employees to 35 employees. So I am a big believer that anyone who wants to get into the real estate business, you've probably heard these stats. 85% of realtors who start out two years later, they're gone. And so mm -hmm. I kind of went into it thinking, okay, why are they so high? Well, it's not for everyone because if you don't like people, <laughs> this is not your business. And you're going to hear, you're going to go through e emotional roller coasters with your clients. And if you're not built for that, don't get started. So I, I you know, people hear, oh, you can make so much money in real estate. Yeah, you can. There is a period of time though, where you're getting your business going. So if you can have something else to kind of buffer you while you're building that, if someone comes into this thinking, oh, they're just gonna make money right off the bat. Is it possible there are people who do that? That's just a rare person. So if you can have something that kind of gives you a base while you're building your, your business, and that's why I think in my personal opinion, any new agent who's coming into the real estate business should use an online lead generator. I look at myself and I think, okay, if I'm just one transaction so far, well, you, you, you can't make a living off of one transaction. So mm -hmm. that's why I think it's important to have someone giving you leads while your friends and family hopefully use you as your agent. The other thing, you know, part, and I shared it earlier about, you know, you got to have a good energy when you're making these, these calls. And I think having some other income source mm -hmm. allows you to have that energy because every call is not the end all. And um, I heard someone in one of my trainings early on, they said, you don't want to have commission breath, which I love the concept of that. And if you have that energy, you're going to repel, you're going to push those, push those people away really, really quickly. So if you can be calm and understand that this may or may not turn into anything, and that's okay, you're always going to learn something from every single interaction. And if that's your goal, great, you're going to get better and better and better and things will turn. I, I promise if somebody sticks with this business and they like people, they're going to be successful. It just may take two years, three years. And mm -hmm. you know, as, as the stats say, after two years, most people exit. And I will share in the state of Indiana, listen to this stat, 50% of those do two or less transactions a year. The point is, is it doesn't take much to be a top agent in any MLS. And when you dive into the numbers, you start to realize, you know what? If you just focus on you, you know, you definitely want a coach or a mentor, someone who can guide you and, and help you along the way. Somebody can be successful in this. I know that you mentioned um, the high turnaround rate, um, but I have heard agents say that when you are in the real estate industry, you have to be 110% just committed to this industry. You're always going to be an agent. That's your main focus. But it does seem like you have found a great balance in your life. But what is your take on that? I've heard that as well. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that say they, they have saved up enough money that they can live off of their savings for a year. And they have one year to make this work. Then, yeah, then that person's going to have to commit 110%. Technology, <laughs> I'll do a quick sidebar. Uh, my wife's uncle was our manager of our office way, way back when. And his son and I are really close. And I said, hey, what was it like when your dad was doing ministry? He's like, oh my gosh. He'd come home with this book of all the listings and he would flip through them and decide which homes he was going to show someone. He said it would take him hours to do that. I go onto our MLS, I click, you know, residential quick, 
three bedrooms, $100,000 to $300,000, bam, I have all the houses. Mm -hmm. Take these seconds would take hours before. I understand what they're saying, obviously not how I have gone about it. And I am, I would say, you know, I know I'm in the top 10% of the state of Indiana. I, my business grew four times from year one to year to, to year two, that because of, of, you know, cell phones and, and technology, I can be available 100%. I can get a text and an email and then I can read it and then do, do the work that's needed. And then to be frank, my long-term goal within three, three to five years is not to do any other work. You do focus a lot on um, communication and providing a lot of value to your clients. Is there a philosophy or a mantra that you drive your business with? To have fun and be excited for them all along the way. Um, you know, that's kind of my goal is to educate and have fun. I, I look at life as a game and real estate is no less. It is a game. It has rules. It has uh, procedures. It has processes. And once you learn those rules and you can teach someone about those rules, you're going you're gonna to be successful. In the end, if you're not having fun with, with, with the process now, to be frank, there are people who just that's not their energy. So you, you can't do that with them. I'm not always the same thing with everyone. So I, I'm, I'm always educating and, and, and having fun and, and making sure that I'm doing right by them. In terms of how I uh, show that fun is gonna be different. As you're going through the process with people, uh, once you have established some kind of connection or uh, relationship with them is, I don't want to say every single time you get on the phone. At the same time, if it's been a couple of months since you talked to them, you know, and you, once you chat with them, you say, hey, by the way, do you happen to know anyone who uh, might be looking to move or buy or sell a property? And just let them talk. You know, I, I think it does, it does two, two things. Number one, it gets them thinking about all their friends and family that they know. Number two, you're giving them a message. Hey, I have a great service that I offer and I'd like to offer it to the people that you know. I think that is a great message to send to people. It's important that people view this as a business because it is, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's more than a job. It is a business and how you uh, come up, come across to people, that's your brand, um, whether you realize it or not. You know, once you figure out what your brand is and what your deal is, then just stick with it. And uh, there are plenty of people out there for your business to be successful, as successful as you want to be. You know, some people don't want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. They don't need to make that for whatever their, their life is. You know, some people just, just need to make a couple thousand dollars a month. It really depends on, on what your goals are. As a real estate agent, finding a brand or establishing what your brand identity is and how you get that across, and it's a little bit different when you think of branding, you kind of think of a business. And, you know, right. real estate agent, we say that you are your business. So how would you go about branding yourself in that sense? You had mentioned in the intro about F.C. Tucker being uh, number one within the area. And that, you know, we're actually number one within the state and in the greater Indianapolis area. And that's based on sales. And all I was going to say in terms of branding is Tucker already has that out there. Like they're doing billboard ads and they're doing magazine ads. And so there's already some of that there. The other great thing, which I haven't taken advantage of yet, uh, Tucker has uh, a creative department and a lot of people will have logos made. Um, you know, my partner, uh, he had his made and it's so fun. And some, they'll, some people will do, um, they'll have them draw a little caricature of that person next to a Tucker sign. And so there are lots of things that people do. I haven't, uh, to be honest and frank, I have not gone into that quite yet. For me, you know, it's about the people right now. It's not something that I think is necessary uh, within the first year or two of your business, probably year three. I would say that's when you want to start getting that in place.
most people don't, don't, don't come into this business, either A, understanding that, B, kind of knowing what, what kind of agents are they going to be. You know, some people end up just focusing on buyers. Some mm -hmm. people end up focusing on, you know, sellers only. And so it really depends on what you end up uh, finding yourself leaning towards and what kind of agent you want to be. And then once you figure that out, then yes, I would agree branding is very important. What did you find to be the most challenging part of the industry? And how do you, I guess, uh, spin that so it's to your benefit? I would say the most challenging thing initially, because I was, and I'm, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm still, I love this business. I love mm -hmm. everything about it. I mean, there is, I, I, I got, I've gotten way more out of this already than what I expected. And I'm just starting. So I, I can only imagine, you know, what's coming down the road. I mean, I majored in, I majored in psychology in college, which the reason I did that was so that I could learn about people and how people's minds work. And so to be in an industry where <laughs> I get to use that, uh, I mean, I, I had no, when I was reading about being a realtor, I, I didn't know that that was, I mean, they, they say people until you actually get into it and you realize, oh my gosh. And sometimes I'm at, I've had to be a marriage counselor. You know, it's like, okay, folks, you have your thing, you have your thing. Let's figure out how to, let's meet here in the middle. I love the uh, negotiating part, even like, you know, in terms of an offer or even on, e whether it's you're on the buy side or, or, or the sell side. I mean, um, I didn't know that, that there was negotiations <laughs> involved and I love that stuff too. I, I think it takes, probably a year or so to learn what it is you like about this um, industry. And, and I think, you know, to kind of go back to those numbers, I think that's why you have such a high failure rate. And, and I think failure is really a, a bad term. I think you have a high um, uh, attrition rate. It's because people don't realize that there's all these facets to real estate. Um, because once you get into it, you start to see, okay, this is really a, a people business. And there's a lot that comes with that. I'm what's called um, a mobile agent in our office, which means, you know, I don't have an office space. So, you know, this is my office right here. Um, and, you know, some people, some people need to go to the office to be, to be successful. I fortunately have spent, you know, when I ran, ran my own business for 15 years, you know, a lot of that was done here at home. So I got used to working at home and being able to manage, you know, myself. And that's one of the, the challenges as well. And that might be why people, there is such a high attrition rate as well is this is, is this is a self deal, you know, you, you've got to create systems, you've got to create processes that get you making the calls, you know, that gets you out the door, that gets you calling up friends and family who you haven't talked to in two years or something and seeing, hey, I'm a realtor now. Uh, and for some people, that is uncomfortable. They feel like they're in, in being intrusive or they feel like they're trying to sell them something. And uh, you just, you know, um, you got to realize that you have a service they're going to have to use a realtor at some point. Why not you? Mm -hmm. And so unless they know that you're a realtor, whether you send them a postcard to announce that you're a realtor now, or you call them personally, or you visit them, you know, like I went to all my neighbors once I became a realtor and I handed them my postcard and my business card. And I said, you know, I'm excited about being a realtor. If you need any kind of uh, assistance. You know, I know I'm just starting out. I have access to people who've been agents for years and years and years. So if I don't know the answer, I will get you the answer. The other thing I love about this business is there are so many different types of clients. You know, even though they're a buyer, they may be buying a commercial property. They may be buying a gas station. They may be looking for uh, a second home for vacation home it could be their first home each client is different it's not oh i'm gonna do this every day now there are tasks you're gonna do every day which is like making phone calls sending emails checking the mls 
et cetera, et cetera, why you're doing that or who you're doing that for is going to be different every yeah. single day. It just comes back to building relationships with your client at the end of the day. I guess yes. my last question for you would be, what is the most creative thing that you've done for a client, whether it be, you know, while they're buying, like through the home buying process, or maybe at the beginning where you're trying to convince them that you are, you know, the best realtor who's going to keep their best interests at heart and they should work with you. What is the most creative thing that you've done? I would say the most creative thing I've done because we are in a seller's market right now. And I look at all the homes in that neighborhood or in that area. I assume all MLSs are the same. I click on the home and I see the history. And if it's been seven years or more since that home has had a, a transaction, I will call that last agent and say, hey, has your client thought of selling their home? And that's how I found, you know, two, two of my clients, their dream homes. You know, one of them I talked the other day, he's like, he's like, did you know I was putting this house in the market? I said, no, I did not. I, my clients are interested in this neighborhood and I'm just calling all the agents who had any kind of transactions with, on any of these homes. And he said, we're actually going to list it in, in two weeks. I said, well, my clients would love first dibs. He's like, you got it. You know, and that was, and now the other one was more of, they were thinking about selling in like mm -hmm. six months or a year. Um, and they're like, well, if the price is right, they'll sell me. They both have college age kids. You know, the hope is that those kids will use me. Is there anything you'd like to say to any potential clients of yours who may be listening, maybe anyone interested in making the move? What would you like them to know about you? Well, hopefully you've kind of sensed my energy that I am down to earth. I will listen to you and you know help you in any capacity that I can. And if I certainly don't know uh, what it is, I will find out for you and don't hesitate to reach out and ask me any question you have. Well, perfect. Thank you so much, Greg, for being here. This has been such an informative conversation. I really hope that our listeners uh, could get a lot of value and a lot of advice out of this episode. Um, so thank you so much for that. As for everyone listening at home, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, as always, we love any kind of feedback and comments, so please send an email to media at setschedule.com. And if you like more content like this, please go ahead and check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash setschedule, or you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Our handle is at setschedule across all platforms. Thank you so much for listening today. Thank you so much, Greg.